بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه من والاه ما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال تبارك الله تعالى كما ورد في سورة آل عمران يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تبارك الله تعالى في نفس السورة وما محمد إلا رسول قد خلت من قبله الرسل أفإن مات أو قتل إن قلبتم على أعقابكم ومن ينقلب على أعقابه فلن يضر الله شيئا وسيجزي الله الشاكرين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي أمين يا رب العالمين So you know Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم He invited people in Arabian Peninsula Makkah and Medina after announcing his prophethood for almost um, 23 years almost 23 years and this includes the most unimaginable hardships and difficulties of 13 years in Makkah which include financial difficulties also and then 10 years in Medina which was filled with battles every single every next year there's a challenge there is a battle within from inside of urban peninsula or outside until Islam was established not only at the individual level even at the collective level and there were no traces of Jahiliyyah left Alhamdulillah this was the hardship of Rasulullah Sallallahu and the team which we say Sahaba Ridwanullahi Alayhi Majma'in and as soon as this happened before he passes away I just want to share a few moments which will help us to understand his legacy Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam just five days before, just five days before his death, he was feeling severe pain in his head. He came out for Salatul Zohar. People were waiting for him. And there was a headband on his head to control the pain. He came out and instead of leading Salah, he actually sat on the member for, before Salatul Zohar. So the people around him gathered and he spoke to the Sahaba. I just want to share a few of his statements. So in Sayyid Bukhari, very first thing which he said, and again, this is just five days before he will leave the dunya. The most beautiful soul will depart the most beautiful body which ever existed on the face of the earth. The first thing he said, اللَّهِ عَلَى الْيَهُودُ وَالنَّصَارَ اتَّخَذَ قُبُورُ أَنْبِيَاءٍ مَسَاجِدْ He says, May Allah destroy previous community of Jews and Christians who have taken their prophets' graves as the place of worship. So basically he is conveying the message that don't worship me. This was a problem back in the days, what we nowadays call celebrity culture. Do not worship me. We are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was cognizant of the fact that there might be some people who will elevate my status after I'm gone and do the same thing. So the first reminder he is giving just five days before is this. Then he offered Salat to Zohar. And then after Salat to Zohar, he climbed the member again. And then he actually said this. Again, after the Salat al-Zahar, he climbed the member, Sahabas were sitting around. This is mentioned in Rahikul Makhtum. He says, Inna abdan khayyarahu Allahu bayna an yu'tiyahu min zahrat al-dunya ma sha'u bayna ma indahu faqtara ma indahu. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave one of his servant, abdan, one of his servant, two options.
said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave one of his servants two options. One of the options is he can select from this dunya and from the treasures of Allah in this dunya. And the other option Allah gave to that servant is he can select akhirah. And that servant have selected akhirah. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was in the audience. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu started crying. Sayyid al Khudri narrated this hadith. He says, Some of the Sahaba, some of the people, they said, Untur ila Hazrat Shaykh, look at this old person, he's crying while Rasulullah is talking about a servant having two options. Later on, it was proven after five days, Rasulullah was talking about himself. That when Islam is established, Prophet's responsibility, job description is over. Now it's time to leave the dunya. Dealing with people is never easy. And the hardest, the most difficult job are the jobs of Prophets. Anbiya alayhim as -salam. Once deen is established, they want to go back to the luxury of meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it's not fun dealing with the people. Later on, his pain grew so much that he couldn't lead Salah. So he appointed Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an to lead Salah while he is sick and he could not even walk towards the prayer area. And he led 17 prayers as mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu This also tells us the leadership of Rasulullah sallallahu He was eager in making leaders. When we are leading the communities and whatever title we have, we are eager to make followers. How many followers you will have? That's a question nowadays people ask. Facebook, YouTube, how many followers you will have? Let me ask you this. How many leaders did you make? Rasulullah sallallahu he appointed Abu Bakr Siddiq and indicated who will be the leader after, after I am gone. He led 17 prayers until Monday came. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an Fajr Salah of Monday he was leading Sahabas were praying behind him and during the prayer Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he was in the room of Aisha he pulled the curtain he saw Abu Bakr is leading and Sahabas were praying behind him and he smiled when some Sahaba noticed that Rasulullah is pulling the curtain and looking at us the hadith says that they were extremely happy so much so that they were actually distracted from Salah and Rasulullah Sallallahu pulled the curtain back and then Prophet Sallallahu was not allowed for the next prayer Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when the news is spread in the Medina and then entire Arabian Peninsula, either people are Muslim or they are aware of the Islamic power in that time. Anas radiallahu anh reported this, and this is very famous. Anas radiallahu anh said that the, the, I have never witnessed a day better than the day when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu arrived in Medina as an immigrant. And I never witnessed a day as dark as that day when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away. When this news is spread, some Sahabas were there. Some Sahabas were outside of Medina. Abu Bakr Siddiq was at the outskirts of Medina with his five with his family. Radiallahu an. People had different reactions. Imam Qurtubi says people had different reactions. How they reacted to this news. And out of all the reactions, the most strangest reaction was the reaction of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh. And this is very natural. When you love someone, 
Sometimes you are in the state of disbelief. Umar radiallahu an, and we all know the personality of Umar radiallahu an. We all know the status of Umar radiallahu an. As soon as he heard, he picked his sword, and he says this: "Wallahi ma mata Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam." By Allah, Rasulullah did not die, even though he just died, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And he says, "Whoever." claims that Rasulullah had died, then I was going to chop his head off from my sword. Now who will even dare to talk to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh like this? Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh came, he was aware of the situation. He went, the hadith says he went inside, he kissed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and then he says, Wallahi mata Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away. He came out of the room. Umar radiallahu anhu was still with his sword. No one is even willing to talk to Umar ibn Khattab because of his sword and the, the, the status of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu climbed the member. And all the other Sahaba started gathering around Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh. And then Umar radiallahu anh also came and he said, and Abu Bakr started his speech. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anh said this famous, famous statement, I want all the masajid and all the Islamic institutions where we worship celebrities, where we worship individuals to write this statement down. Abu Bakr Siddiq said, Radiallahu an, Man kana ya'bud Allah, fa inna Allah hay lam yamud. Whoever worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he should know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever living and he doesn't die. Wa man kana ya'budu Muhammadan fa inna Muhammadan qadmat. And whoever worship Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he should know that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have left us and he passed away. And then he recited. Then he recited this ayah. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ Allah says, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is nothing but a messenger. He's only a messenger. قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرَّسُولِ There were many, many messengers came before him. أَفَإِمْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلَ so if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will die or will be killed in qalabtum ala aqabikum will you going to turn your back from Islam? Your dedication, your loyalty, your sincerity was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or was with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Were you worshipping an individual or worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And if you do this falain yadurra Allah shayya then you won't harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will only harm yourself if you are worshipping individual and human um, uh, celebrities. And this actually shows us because once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died and Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu recited this ayah, Ibn Abbas was there. Ibn Abbas said that Sahabas reacted to this ayah in such a way that on that entire day Sahabas were reciting this ayah to remind themselves that actually Rasulullah son passed away and now we have to move on. So much so that Abu Bakr Siddiq when he became Khalifa after him Umar and Usman and Ali Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'in Islam did not shrink, Islam expanded because they know that we are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If there was any one person who deserves that the Islam will collapse after his death after he will leave was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But even for him, Allah says, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا Rasul." That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is only a messenger. He will come, we respect him more than our parents, he deliver us a message, and now we have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following his guidance. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us ability to understand this inshallah ta'ala. Imam Qurtubi rahimahullah said about this ayah before I can tell you the gist of the khutbah and the lesson from the khutbah 
when he gave the tafsir of this ayah he says in the tafsir of surah ali amran fa'alam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi hazi al-aya anna al-rusul laysat bi baqiyatin fi qawmiha abadan wa annahu yajibu al-tamassuk bima atat bihi al-rusul wa in fuqid al-rasul bimawtin aw qatl he says this ayah illustrates this ayah manifest that a prophet is not meant to live in the nation forever if we really want to follow his legacy then we have to actually follow his tradition because eventually everyone have to die kullu nafsin za'iqatul maut everyone have to leave everyone have to leave we should just get used to it what are we learning from this there are a few lessons and i just want you to pay close attention to this individualism versus community we are living in a time where people literally worship themselves this modern day social media devices are the practical manifestation of that individualism i will do what will make me happy and this entire facebook and tiktok is promoting yourself promoting yourself promoting yourself i'm not saying that it's haram to do it for the deen but i'm saying that entire celebrity culture worshiping yourself yourself becomes more important than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is expressive individualism and it harms the institutions when umar radiyallahu an removed khalid bin walid radiyallahu an this dismissed khalid bin walid radiyallahu an you all know the incident right the tribe from bani makhzum made a big fuss that umar why did you remove khalid bin walid by the way everyone was saying in whichever battle khalid radiyallahu an participates Muslims win that battle in whichever battle Khalid radiallahu an didn't participate Muslims have a difficulty and a hard time so it was like Khalid bin Walid is the deciding factor it was spreading in Muslim community guess what Umar radiallahu an did Umar radiallahu an said Khalid you are dismissed you still have to fight but you have to stay under the leadership of Abu Ubaid ibn Jarrah and then tribe of Bani Makhzum came and says Umar why did you do this radiallahu an amirul mu'mineen he gave few reasons but before i can tell you that one reason he says victory doesn't come with khalid and umar victory comes from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wallahi we have to internalize it wallahi we have to internalize it wallahi we have to internalize it if tomorrow you will come that imam as if you are leaving this masjid will collapse i will think this is an insult to me uqsimu billah if you will say this masjid won't be the same this will be an insult to me but if you will come and you will say inshallah we are going to carry on and we are going to take the masjid to the next level then I will think alhamdulillah my five years were not wasted because this is not about me this is not about you this is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this religion was served when we were in our diapers and when we won't be existing next 50 60 years this religion will prosper inshallah ta'ala because allah promised three times in the quran huwa allazi arsala rasulahu bil huda deen al haq li yuzhirahu ala deen kulli may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to help the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ameen ya rab so first thing is about in in just focus on community more than the individual we have an entire institution they will collapse they will collapse just because one of the leader will die or one of the leader will leave because of the over dependency of that so when umar ibn khattab radiallahu an gave reason why i removed khalid one of the reason he gave is that faqad khabat umma ta'allaka amruha bir rajulin wahid he says those organizations those nations were destroyed who hand over all of their affairs to the one person and when that one man show one person collapse the entire organization collapses if there is any single person who could have brought the revolution it was with rasulullah but even he needed the help of sahaba he was not alone then who are we you know when muslim community becomes corrupt just like today we are we are not as better muslims as the previous times as lights and sahabas and tabi'in and tabat tabi'in of course not when he becomes corrupt one of the things we do we tend to become obsessed with the ideas 
we tend to become obsessed with the people, with the celebrities, with the individual more than the mission and the ideas. And when that person will go, your entire religion will fall because your religion is clicking, is clinging with that individual, not with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I may start thinking that if I will leave this masjid will collapse, then I should remind myself, I should remind myself that I have a big issue in my heart. If you are thinking as a volunteer, as an imam, as a president, whatever the, your case is, if you will leave this masjid will struggle, then please forgive me, but you should leave right now. Because you have some serious issue. You think Islam needs your help, Allah needs your help. No. It is we who need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with this intention, you are actually corrupting yourself and others. And please as a community, this is my humble request. As a community, we either idolize people or demonize people. Keep the people at their level. Keep the people at their level. Keep the people at their level. You don't have to insult someone when he doesn't deserve criticism. And if he deserves, you can constructively criticize that person. And when he deserves the compliment, you should not over compliment that person. We have the problem of idolizing and demonizing people, which is very harmful for that individual also. It just boosts the ego. Remember last thing before inshallah, we can end. Scholars will come and go. Imams will come and go. Just like prophets came, delivered the message and they went. Individual brothers and sisters volunteer in the masjid, they will come and go. <coughs> our dedication, our loyalty, our sincerity should be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Yes, we should respect everyone. We should miss everyone if they have done something for the sake of Allah. But our dedication should be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our Islam is not weak that is clinging with one individual or with certain individual. No, my connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rock solid. And I will end with this inshallah. If tomorrow, God forbid, God forbid, if tomorrow you will hear one of your favorite sheikh, one of your favorite influencer on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, they have become atheists. <laughs> this should not have bothered you. Why? Because your connection is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, you can bring it up the discussion what went wrong, but regarding your faith, your connection is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not with these individuals who will collapse and your entire religion will collapse. So tie your expectation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who will never disappoint you inshallah ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us proper wisdom inshallah in dealing with this. Allah mansur al-Islam wa al-Muslimin Allah maksul man khazal adina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa la taj'alna ma'hum Allahumma la taj'alana zamban illa gafarta wa la hamman illa farrajta wa la daynan illa qadayta wa la hajata min hawaiji dunya wa al-akhira illa qadayta haya ar-arham ar-rahimin